Breakups are never easy, but what better way to kind of drown out your sorrows than to find romance in the best place possible to find it? Yes, MMOs. Just a joke. <laughs> My love story with Yamada-kun at level 999 is out, and I have watched three episodes of it, and I can honestly say I'm glad I watched three episodes of it because... Early on, I really didn't like this main character. But over time, I kind of started feeling for the character, honestly. This is a story about a breakup, trying to get over your romances, and really trying to move on with your life. And yes, the people that you might find and make connections with in the most unfamiliar places. This is my first impressions of the series, a series that is airing in the spring 2023 anime season. So let's jump right into it. My love story with Yamada Kun at level 999 opens up with Akane, who is sitting down with Takuma, who is her boyfriend. And yes, he is breaking up with her. He says that he's been talking with this girl online on the game they've been actually playing together. And he likes her, and she said that she likes him, and so they're gonna go out together, so he's gotta break up with Akane. And yes, she's sort of seen this coming. He's been acting a little cold with her lately, and that's pretty much the proof of it. He's been seeking out some other girl. Of course, this is kind of crushing to Akane. She's kind of struggling with it. She's pretty much built most of her life around Takuma. She even got into this MMO just to play the game with him. <laughs> The dude has the cojones to actually text her afterwards and say, hey, um, by the way, those those items I gave you, I'm gonna need you to give them back. Uh, just throw them in our shared folder because I, I need them back. They're kind of rare. She's like, all right, that <laughs> dude, the dude has the galls. But yeah, it's, it's obviously tragic. She's trying to get over it. And then while she's kind of messing around the game to see if he possibly came in and got the items already, he's already unfriended her. She's kind of throwing a little bit of a tantrum. She's upset about it. And then this guy shows up, Yamada. This fro guy from their guild who is like really, really skilled. Everybody kind of looks up to him, come out, find out later on that he's like this very well-known pro gamer. Well, she's kind of like divulging how she's going through something hard and somebody just broke up with her. And the guy is just like slowly replying to her. <laughs> this Yamada guy is not very quick to respond. Well, she comes to find out there's an event coming up, and it's a real-life event, and so everybody from the game itself comes together, and they get these, you know, these codes for some special items, some rare items. And she decides she's gonna get revenge on Takuma. Takuma's obviously gonna go there with his new girlfriend, and so she wants to show up looking really pretty, really thin, great hair and everything, just to show him what he lost. And when she arrives there, she sees Takuma with this other girl, who's obviously the one that he met online. She goes to call out to him, falls over, and this guy comes by and picks her up. And yes, small world, obviously. This is the fro guy, Yamada the fro guy. And he's super handsome. And then Takuma just runs up and says, oh, you must be Yamada. It completely ignores it. Akane's right there. Oh, you must be Yamada. <laughs> I really look up to you. I follow you and watch all of your videos. And so Akane decides best way to get back at her ex-boyfriend is to act like Yamada is her new boyfriend. And so she actually bribes him with the code that you get from the event. And so he decides to say, yeah, okay, sure. It's, I'm her boyfriend. Well, this doesn't help. Takuma is just kind of more distraught the fact that Yamada is going out with his ex-girlfriend, not really caring too much about her. And so Akane decides to drown out her sorrows drinking with Yamada, forcing him to stay with her. What you kind of get from this whole encounter is, yes, Yamada wants to leave. He doesn't want to listen to this, but, and he wants to get back to his games, but... He still sticks around. And despite her going to the restroom and coming back, he's still there. He actually runs off and gets a bandage to give to her because she fell down. So there's a little bit of a feeling that she's starting to like Yamada and how kind he is. But then she drinks herself to a stupor and he has to take her back to his place where she vomits on herself. <laughs> what kind of follows this whole ordeal is you have this kind of every now and then happenstance encounters between Akane and Yamada. While at the same time, Akane really trying to get over her ex-boyfriend, constantly thinking about him, trying to drown out her sorrows by doing something else, spewing out all of her frustration with her friend who kind of just sits there and kind of listens to it, but at the same time tries to push her to kind of move on. And all kind of centered around her kind of slowly being dragged into this game again that she started playing with her ex-boyfriend, mostly through her encounters with Rudy, who is the guild mistress. And this all kind of leads up to Rudy inviting Akane to go to this cafe event that they're going to have for the game itself. You know, get all the guildmates together so they can meet each other in real life. And yes, that's when everything starts getting really confusing as to who is who. <laughs> Third episode leaves with the whole thing of like, oh, so is that Rudy the whole time? Yeah, I guess it could be. But yeah, my thoughts on my love story with Yamada-kun at level 999. 
I will first off start by saying it looks good. I, I think Madhouse is doing a really solid job of the series. The comedic beats are really played out well. The, the, the kind of more goofy looking character designs just to kind of express the comedy of the scene. They have a lot of shots that are really beautiful. Like the scene when Akane first wakes up the next morning was a really beautiful shot. It looks really good. And I really like the game visuals too, even though they kind of joke about the fact that the video game itself is kind of dated in its graphics. It's got this really cute chibi style to it that I really, I feel nostalgic for. It's, it kind of reminds me of things like, you know, Ragnarok Online and stuff like that that I played a long time ago. It's, it's a style that I like. The story itself. Now here's where I am all over the place, honestly, with the series. Not to say that I'm at all displeased with the show itself, but I have to admit that early on, I didn't like Akane. And I think that's for purpose. I don't know. I, I almost feel like it's for purpose. I, I feel for her. Akane getting broken up by this guy, I feel for her, especially since I really feel like she, her entire life was kind of molded around this guy. Again, she, <laughs> she scheduled herself around being with him. She started playing this video game that she didn't really care about. I mean, it, it's obvious she didn't care about it. She was just there spamming and killing mobs just to level up to do things with him. And she doesn't know much about the game itself. As we're finding out, she's discovering, oh yeah, stop putting crap inside of the box, this kind of stuff. She doesn't know because she never really committed herself to finding out things about the game. So I feel for her. It, it almost, it, you get a sense that it feels like a part of her has been ripped out. And every time she thinks of something, she thinks about him. Now, I, I think they could have portrayed that a little bit better. They had this one moment where she's trying to figure out what she's supposed to do for the day. And it kind of just devolves into, oh, I'm just going to hang out. I'm just going to go home and play game. It didn't really kind of, I was hoping it would kind of hit on the ideas like, oh, got to make sure that I go get Takuma's clothes or something like that because he typically has his clothes washed that day. It didn't really do well enough to kind of solidify that. I just feel like Momoko, her friend, just says, yeah, you kind of lived your life around him and now you don't have that. But I honestly, yes, I got a little tired of hearing her constantly complain and constantly think about Takuma, even though I understand it. Not that I want to watch it. <laughs> It's kind of one of those things where you you know what they're trying to portray and it makes sense. I just don't want to watch it. If that makes if that makes sense for anybody. But I think it's doing well in the idea that her personality is sort of shifting over time because early on I couldn't stand her personality. She felt like the type of do it my way or you're dumb. Like especially with her conversation with Yamada, it really feels like she's almost criticizing him because he's not interested in romance like she is and he hasn't dated and he's so pretty. What a waste. It just feels like it's more kind of selfish in her responses to whatever he's saying, even though he doesn't want to be there. And she's constantly trying to push what she's going through onto him. And it, it, it makes sense. She needs somebody to vent to. But at the same time, she's really open about divulging her personal life to just random strangers, which is kind of interesting because honestly, it does. I don't think that's a Japanese thing. Like I, I'm so used to in Japanese culture, people are very unwilling to divulge what they're going through because they don't want to place that burden upon somebody else. In the West, we're totally open with it. We'll find a random stranger that says, hey, how's it going? Just by passing comment. And you're like, hold on a second. Let me, let me fill you in. And it's like, whoa, wait, this doesn't really feel Japanese. So maybe the next generation is more open to it. Maybe this is more of a, a newer title. So it makes sense in that regard. But either way, she's very open to tell everybody what she's going through. And it's like, Girl, <laughs> find somebody you trust and divulge that with them. Don't divulge it to anybody. But anyways, that all aside, like I said, over time, I feel like I'm starting to understand this character and I feel like the character herself is actually changing. Her personality is changing and she's becoming more open, which I think is great. Her willingness to keep sticking on Takuma is evolving as well. And the idea that you've ha you finally have that moment where she finally decides, time to throw it away. It's time for me to put this away. I'm not going to let this go, which is pretty much a symbolism of her grandmother. She doesn't want to let get this go, but she's going to let Takuma go. And I think that was a great turning point for her to finally open up to what she wants to do no going forward, which is obviously <laughs> Forest of Savior and Yamada. And I'm liking that transition so far. I, I think it's doing very well in that I, I do really like the cast so far with the Forest of Savior. Rudy, which right now it seems like they're insinuating as this Eita guy, which... Yes, <laughs> MMO, expecting that. I was expecting at least one character to be playing a, a gender that's not theirs. But who knows? It might be a fact that Eita likes Yamada. It, it seems to be kind of implying that. I'm not too sure. I, I, my current theory with the end of episode three is that it's probably Eita created the character, Rudy, for his sister. And he plays that character. 
And so I think there's probably like a, a, a two person persona for one character. Eta is probably the character that's always talking to Akane and trying to encourage her to keep playing and and trying to soften the blow of Yamada's criticisms of her in the guild box. But I think the one that's expressing her love and hanging out with Yamada is the other girl. But who knows? It might just be Eta likes Yamada. My, my, the thing that's kind of throwing me off is the text. I don't. I, it kind of played out the text that Yamada got as something that Akane was imagining. She was imagining Yamada grabbing his phone and <laughs> Rudy was saying, I love you. But the reply kind of makes me believe it was a real a real message that he did get that. And he was just replying with, yeah, sure, we'll talk later. But I am looking forward to seeing these other characters more. I think it's been spending too much time in these first three episodes, just focused so much on Akane and giving up Takuma that we really haven't expanded the other characters of the cast yet. So I don't really know going forward, even though we're three episodes in, how well this show is going to work because something like a romance comedy is really going to be playing heavily on the chemistry of the characters. And I think episode four is going to give us a good sign of that because they're all meeting each other. Yamada, honestly, when I seen the previews for this series, I thought I was going to hate him <laughs> because he seemed like he was going to be one of those just very silent type that's almost aggravating, the type that just doesn't get it whenever somebody says something. And he's technically that. <laughs> I mean, you have the, the 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 high schooler girls that are all trying to, you know, uh, confess to him and he's just kind of completely oblivious as to what they're doing. Oh, they were trying to confess to me? Oh, crap. <laughs> it's like, really, dude? Are we that dumb? But they're obviously going for the persona of the, the, the gamer geek, the guy that just does nothing but FPSs and plays this FOS. And he has no clue about romance or anything else outside of that. But I like the fact that he's pretty clear on the idea that, you know, I'm just not interested in romance. And this is what I do. This is what I enjoy doing. It's creating a really cool separation of what the two of their interests is. And technically, Akane trying to slowly move into what his interest is. If we're going to get FPS episode, we'll see. <laughs> I'm actually wondering more if it's going to be an idea of Akane dragging him more into FOS rather than doing FPSs because that's what he's a pro gamer for is FPSs. So maybe maybe she could drag him into FOS, which is his casual game that he plays. So far, I really like how the development is happening between Akane and Yamada, honestly. Starting off, like I said, with it really just being Akane whining like crazy and Yamada having to deal with her just literally vomiting everything onto him. But I like that it's kind of slowly transitioning to him sort of having feelings for her, like realizing that he, you know, felt bad. I don't know if it's an aspect of him feeling bad for her, but he's seen her in a very vulnerable state and he did sort of see something in her. I'm just hoping that it gets to eventually to a point where it kind of shows where Akane can do something for Yamada, where it does sort of show him that he has an interest in her. Obviously, Akane is getting an attachment to Yamada because he was there for her. And he helped her. She was in a really bad spot and he took his time to kind of go out there and reach out to her. Whereas we haven't really seen that from Akane's perspective. We haven't seen her do something that is beneficial to Yamada that would show that, hey, I, I want her in my life. Like, I need her presence here. What is she showing him or bringing him that is something that he's going to desire other than just her being cute and doki doki. My only assumption is that it might be the idea that she can possibly pull him out to social life and it be something that he wants to experience because that's gotta be something outside of just FPSs and FOS all day. It could just be companionship. Somebody that's there that talks to you because he does seem like he's sort of <laughs> doesn't talk much in games. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what the whole, like, slow responses was within the first episode. Was it just that he was, like, AFK and coming back and going, oh, all right, goes back to doing something, and then he comes back over and just types a little bit more? Or was it, like, a thing of, like, maybe he's really bad at typing because he always does voice chats? <laughs> maybe he's, like, super slow at typing. He said it was, like, taking, like, two minutes just to reply with an O. Anyhow, uh, I, I also like the ending parts. Um, now, granted, the, fir the third episode was really showing us what happened when he brought her to his place and she she yacked. I'm just waiting the whole time. When's she going to yak? But the, the first two episodes at least had like these goofy little kind of, yeah, if you're if you're an MMO gamer, you've seen this happen. So they have like the whole uh, <laughs> pretty much hairstyles for Akane and she decides to get this one pack and it ends up being the same one that everybody else is wearing. I'm like... Yep. The one you think is the cutest or the coolest looking, everybody's wearing that same hairstyle. And the second one was really funny with the idea of Yamada being forced to have to log in to help her with something. And then he just falls asleep on the keyboard. <laughs> he just stand there and she's getting killed. I really like those. I hope that they do that more often because I really do love like these. Oh, yeah. If you're an MMO gamer, if you're a gamer, you know what this is. 
you you could chuckle to it and go, yeah, I've experienced that. But that was kind of what I was hoping to get. I, I really do love this mismatch of romance and MMO experiences. Something like Recovery of MMO Junkie, I related to a lot. I just felt like it 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 is connected to me on like a personal level. Even though it's kind of has that Japanese small world video game type of mentality where everybody's sort of like in a server that's like four blocks from each other. So everybody keeps bumping into each other in real life, which is technically a thing for a lot of games in Japan. But which is completely different over here where it's like <laughs> we play an MMO and it's people that are in like random other countries or the other side of the country. But anyways, I'm 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 excited to see more of this series, but I will say that I'm not like super invested in this show. I wish I was. Um I think a lot of that has to do with so much time spent in Akane just kind of being stuck in her past relationship, which again, I do understand it is a thing. It's harder for some people to let go than other people. It never indicated how much time she spent with Takuma which is kind of a disheartening thing. Like, it doesn't even indicate they've been together for, like, six months or something. But it's still a, a difficult thing, but at the same time, it's just not entertaining to watch for me personally. I just feel like it's just kind of just dragging itself out and just stuck in a mud. But I think it will be impactful if we do see some significant growth in the character. But anyways, I'm getting back into it. That's my thoughts on my love story with Yamada-kun at level 99. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's the series. You're going to be checking it out. Additionally, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more and you like what you see here, make sure to go down below and hit that tips link, Patreon link, or become a member of the channel. I greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel, and y'all take care.